Good afternoon and welcome once again to my daily chat. Uh, this is episode number 623 and the title today is Valentine's Day or it is Valentine's Day aka Singles Awareness Day aka Love Acknowledgement Day. I've been hearing different names for it so I'm gonna play with that today. So before I jump into the whole thing because it is Valentine's Day let me introduce myself so you know who I am and what I'm about. My name is Barry Selby I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I also, and I help, I help women, I've been rephrasing this so it gets stuck in my head. I help women, and sometimes men, find and create balance in love, life, and business, and particularly around relationships. Again, I'm playing with that. I'm a passionate champion of the divine feminine, which is what inspired these talks I've done every day now for over two years, which is called Messages for the Masculine, Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. And today, happy Valentine's Day. Today is Valentine's Day. And so I'm going to play with that. I've talked about it for a few days about preparation for it. Now we're here. And this is Valentine's Day, a.k.a. Singles Awareness Day, which is like, oh, that's an interesting title. I saw that posted today. And also Love Acknowledgement Day, which I like a lot as well. So I'm going to play with those angles just to keep something to play with. And I might even divest my own single plans for tonight too, since I'm going to go do something tonight myself. Um... So it is Valentine's Day, and I've already seen some interesting posts from people who are single. Thank you, Della, and happy Valentine's Day to you too. Uh, and by the way, that quick reminds me that if you're watching this and wondering who that was, I'm on Facebook Live, so if you're watching on YouTube, you won't see the comments, because YouTube doesn't, YouTube, Facebook Live does not export the dialogues and stuff to my videos, and when I put it up on YouTube, you won't see it. I'll give you the links about that at the back end. Anyway, let me just jump right in, and uh, yes, it should be fun. So, I've seen a lot of posts today about Valentine's Day, a lot of positive ones and some sad ones, people um, sharing some of their poor, I won't say poor me stories, but certainly stories of wounding and past sufferings. Someone is posting about how their wedding anniversary for their ex-relationship, their divorce, was on Valentine's Day. So every Valentine's Day they're being reminded of, of their wedding day, which no longer stands. So there's a, lot of, there's a spectrum of feelings about Valentine's Day. And one thing I want to talk about today is the, um, well, I don't want to keep retreading the same path I've been talking about the last five days, which is how this is a misrepresented day. Actually, no, that, that part I haven't talked about. I've talked about how it's a hallmark holiday a lot, about how it's about making money, raising prices and everything else. However, one thing I didn't talk about directly yesterday, I did talk, no, I didn't talk about it yesterday, I talked about it somewhere else, is the, one of the origins of Valentine's Day, because there are a few different stories about Valentine's Day originally, and one of them is about a certain um, person. I'm not sure if he was a spiritual teacher or was just a, a rebel during Roman times. In fact, he was in part of the Roman Empire. Um, back in those ancient times, there was a decree by the Caesar that men weren't allowed to get married because they would need, because basically he wanted to build his army. And if men were married, they wouldn't go to fight for him. So he banned marriages. I'm not sure whether it was an age range or what it was, but he banned marriages because he wanted men to stay single so they could go fight for him. Empire-minded person. So this guy named Valentine was actually, in a way, um, kind of like helping people, helping men escape with their women to go get married somewhere else. Like he was their, um, what do you call him? He, he was, the, there's a term, it's, it's almost like, I, 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 it's a, I know, I don't know, I don't want to use that, that analogy would be crossing a line I want to cross, let me get back on track. Sorry, I was about to drop another idea and I was like, that wouldn't work. But basically he was, he was their, he was their um, escape path to get free of the army so they could get married. And he got caught and was basically executed in a very painful way. So Valentine's Day itself has a very bloody history. There may be an idea behind it about love, but it was also about rebelliousness and wounding and all sorts of other stuff. So it wasn't pretty. Having said that, this day we, we um, raise up to be a special day because it is Valentine's Day. It is the one day of the year when you can celebrate love, or you should celebrate love, and romance and spend lots of money on flowers and chocolates, which are very expensive today versus other days of the year. It's a bit of a crock, to be blunt. I know I was watching a, a, a video earlier today about Valentine's celebrations other places in one country, I think it, was, it may have been Brazil, where they celebrate Valentine's week, which is a much better idea, frankly. Why just do one day, one expense a whole week? And the three titles I put in, the three 
titles of Valentine's Day are put in the title of this broadcast, in the subject title, which was one of them was Singles Awareness Day, which for a lot of people who are single, including myself, it can be interesting to watch the Valentine's expressions of love and romance and possibility and all the single people hoping for love and wishing and praying for it to happen and all that stuff. There's also the one I liked a lot, which I saw, which is Love, love Acknowledgement Day, which I thought, that's a cool one. Because I know that in corporate places, people do give uh, Valentine's gifts to each other. Uh, schools, they do it with each other as well. So there's definitely a sharing of love, which is a great thing to have. So the Valentine's mythos or the Valentine's presentation about how it's like the matching between one person and their soulmate, find each other and it's wonderful and all great. Let's take that off the table for now. My continual reminder <laughs> is that Valentine's Day is really a, a nudge to remember that love is meant to be expressed every day. In fact, if you're in a relationship and you're not expressing love to your partner in a way they can receive, or oh, sidebar, I'll get to that in a second, then you're failing your relationship. So let me just, I need to go out of that sidebar for a second. So let me put something on the table that you may have already forgotten about, but something I've talked about quite a lot in the past, which is the five love languages. Because since you're talking about love acknowledgement and love connection in a relationship, if you and your partner aren't sharing love the way that each other can receive it or understand it or, or, or be communicated, communicated about, you may be suffering at a lesser place than if you know what you're doing. So let me put this on the table. In the Five, five, Lo five Love Languages by Gary Chapman, um, and you can go to, the, I think it's fivelovelanguages.com, you can go to do, you know, do a test yourself. There are five basically predominant and general love languages that we communicate with, meaning that when we do these things or express these things, this is the way we naturally express love without realizing it. So the five love languages are, just so you know what they are, is words of affirmation, um, <laughs> I'll get there in a second. Acts of service, sorry, yeah. Words of affirmation, acts of service, physical touch, um, gifts, and quality time. <laughs> oh, and you should remember, remember them. It was always like, okay, I've got a five on the table, so I'm good. So, for example, if you have a couple together, and this is not you, but somebody you might know, where, using straight couple as an example, man and woman, where his primary love language is words of affirmation, as in saying, I love you, and her predominant love language is physical touch, where she wants to be all hugged, connected, and the physical connection to know of love. It sounds crazy, but the reality is for most people, if they try to talk, share the love with each other, meaning if he tells her he loves her, and she doesn't feel touched by him physically, she may not feel it. Well, she won't feel it, she won't receive it. And if she touches him, but he doesn't hear the words, I love you back, he may not feel loved either. So now let's multiply that with the other languages. So somebody has quality time, basically means that they want to have time with their partner and their partner tells them they love them all the time, but they're always at work and they're never around. They won't feel loved. Even though they're being told that I love you because the person telling them they love you, that's their love language, which is to be, is words of affirmation, to hear it. But the person receiving it wants quality time. They're not getting it, they don't feel loved. So these reminders are to indicate that loving may be your intention, but if you don't know how you communicate it with your partner, then they may not get it from you. And you may wonder why they feel disappointed or upset or sad or disconnected. It could be as simple as this. And so I'm giving you this one because being Love Acknowledgement Day, it's also good to acknowledge how you love. Because if you don't know yourself what your natural love tendency is, you're missing out on a whole bunch of expressions you could be doing. So my recommendation is if you want to go to 5 fivelovelanguages.com, I'm not sure, I think it may be either way with the number five or the word five. You should maybe, you'll get there and find the site. You can do the test yourself and get the list. You may already know what yours are, but you may be surprised what your secondary is. And this is the thing. The five love languages are not the only, you only have one of those five to choose from. Most people have a primary, but within a second that may be very close. In fact, sometimes that second could be the same level. So you may have quality time, words of information as your primary two. It's possible. Oftentimes it's one predominant, one secondary. But the thing is, if the other person gives you gifts all the time because they think that what you need, what they want is gifts, so they give you gifts, which could be just knickknacks. It could be just leaving love notes. It could be buying a new car. I mean, there's extremes, obviously. But giving you something and you're just like, so what? Yes, you might like it, but until you hear them say it or spend quality time with you, you won't feel it. And the key is about love is it's the receiver's experience of love that's the key. 
So if you're giving love to somebody else, you really want to learn and discover what that person's receiving love style is to give them love the way they can receive it so they know they're loved and vice versa. This is nuts and bolts stuff, I know, but it's a game changer for so many people's lives. And, and Gary Chapman's work, frankly, um, is a game changer. His, his um, book and his teaching are a seminal understanding about how love is communicated. So it's, it's so simplistic. Yeah, we never talked about this before. Yes, there is an alignment understanding in relationship that we interface through what's known as NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. So we have these different um, primary modes of communication, which is visual, auditory, kinesthetic, or um, auditory digital, which are the four different ways that we normally communicate, which basically means that we learn, communicate, and share visually, or we do it by auditorily, or we do it by feeling, kinesthetic, or we do it by auditory digital, which is more data points. And so Five Love Languages takes it beyond that, which is really more about intimacy and connection, which we forget about. So having that as a primary skill set to use in your love life, in your relationship life, in your romantic experiences, will up-level and qualify and deepen the ability for you to have love in your life. And frankly, I recommend you do it. <laughs> To actually have love, express love, enjoy love, and to have love everywhere you go. But not just to do it as, as lip service, but actually express and embody it in the way that you express it most authentically. And when you're in a relationship, to find out and have your partner find out about you as well, what each other's love languages are. Love language is, or are, so you can be on the same page and have intimacy, connection, and intimacy. Intimacy, connection, and intimacy. Intimacy, connection, and communication. Because that's a vital piece of the puzzle. So that's a, that, was a, that was a sidebar. Let me get back on track because I realized that was a whole different piece brought in there. So, Love Appreciation Day. I would suggest that Love Appreciation is every day. I mean, I do my talks about love and relationships 365. Um, actually, more than that now, 620, whatever it is, 623. So, love can be acknowledged every single day, not just one day. And Singles Awareness Day interesting title but the reality is it is a time for people to remember they're single and frankly I would call it single celebration day because if you're single why not celebrate the fact you are free to do whatever you want and speaking of that so just outing myself because I am single at the moment I've decided well not decided I've got, I've got a couple of nudges and invitation along the way to go and catch, go out for dinner and catch a movie tonight that's my personal date night for me so with myself and be other people around but not not with me not with me directly so there <laughs> And so back to Valentine's Day, since I've covered those two, Valentine's Day, again, is a celebration of a saint who died for a cause. But we don't express that. So maybe next year, since Valentine's Day is over for most people and towards the end of the day now, maybe raise a glass at a toast tonight or next year at the same time as a um, respectful bow to St. Valentine for what he was attempting to do. I would suggest you make that a day of celebration that way, rather than saying, well, we have to keep giving the right gifts to each other or do the right presentation or you didn't do the right thing for me. Because if you start putting Valentine's Day as a pressure point for couples, which is another problem with Valentine's, Valentine's Day, which I, talked to, which I talked about four days ago, I think it was, then you will certainly discover the pain of Valentine's Day not working. But if you treat Valentine's Day as a day to together honor the, the memory and the service of St. Valentine, why not? It'll change the energetic of the day. So that's giving you some things to think about. So Valentine's Day, Love Acknowledgement Day, and Singles, singles Freedom Day. <laughs> I'm relabeling it. I trust you'll enjoy yourself tonight and enjoy yourself today. If you haven't done anything for Valentine's Day, if you're single, go do something fun, playful, light. Don't necessarily spend lots of money, but do something nice for yourself, whether it is to go to the spa or go play or do what I'm doing, go and catch a movie or get dinner, something like that. Or just simply to treat yourself to a nice meal you make at home. <clears throat> Being single does not mean ignoring Valentine's Day for no reason. Celebrate yourself today. Yeah, and if you're a couple, you already have plans I trust. And if you don't, maybe just ignore Valentine's Day, that's your choice. But I recommend doing something to celebrate, just to respect yourselves and honor yourselves and love yourselves. So that is my reminder, my nudge, my push for you to go forward into your life. A um, couple of quick things. Because this is Valentine's Day and it is Love Acknowledgement Day, I'm going to throw in the comments a link for my self-love practice because if you're single, 
it's a good time to practice loving yourself because you are single. Um, and if you're a couple, it's a good time to practice start loving yourself as well. It's, it's a, it's a um, viable option either way. And if you are single and looking for love in all the wrong places and you want some help, I'll put a link in the comments for a discovery session, discovery session with me so we can talk. And if you want to get help and guidance to where you want to go in love and life. And that, I think, is that. Oh, replays. So first of all, this is my daily Facebook Live. It goes on at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day and is otherwise notified. Um, you can find somewhere on the video, there should be a link to indicate where you can be notified next time I go live. Click on that and you'll get notified tomorrow when I go live at 5 p.m. I'll put it in your calendar. Um, it goes then onto my business page for archive, then onto YouTube, and then my podcast. And I'll give you the links for all of those so you know where to find them. So personal page where you can find me live at 5 p.m. Pacific time is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replays that get stored again on my business page, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby dot author. Also on YouTube, and my YouTube channel is Barry Selby. You can find me there and subscribe to my channel. And a playlist where I put these is called Messages from the Masculine. And also I have a podcast on iTunes called Messages from the Masculine, same title again, where I have the audio tracks. You can subscribe to the podcast and you can listen to those whenever you want. Um, and all my social media is my, all my social media is my name, Barry Selby. So with that, I thank you for watching. Um, this one is maybe the last of my, my, we'll see. It may be the last of my Valentine's Day talks this year, but again, again, tomorrow could bring something new. I never planned these. So I appreciate you being with me as always, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Please join me then. If you, oh, if you have any questions, comments about this broadcast, please put them below, um, whether it's on Facebook or on YouTube. And if you want to share this with anybody you think should see this or any groups, feel free to share it with them. And again, thank you for watching. I appreciate you being with me and for participating in my interesting rant. <laughs> and I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care of yourself. Bye.